Hi guys, the second question Jeremy had was regarding relationships and uh, finding a Christian girl who's godly and who has good values and etc. Uh, if you haven't seen my first video and responding to the first part of this question regarding what to do in life, career, and stuff like that, please watch that video first. as the previous one before this one. Uh, find it yourself. I'm not going to hyperlink it. Um, but going off of that there, I suggested that he goes, restores relationship with God to the point that he can hear God's voice and he follows what the Lord tells him to do. And when that's a, and the second thing I prescribed or suggested is to pray for the Lord to connect them with real Christians who love Jesus and to start a fellowship together uh, or maybe join a fellowship that's already there in place that are fully surrendered and you know are, are walking an abiding life, a, a spirit-led life just like Jesus did. Uh, once he finds that group of believers and joins with them, this is the truth. This is uh, what we read in Corinthians. You're going to have to surrender your right to get married. <laughs> that's the only way you're going to... You, that's the only way you leave it up to the Lord to decide for you. So when you come to the Lord and say, Lord, whatever it is you want me to do, it's complete abandonment. I will do it. And I will serve you until the day I die, even if that means I'll be single for the rest of my life. You need to surrender that, uh, that the right to be married. Because we need to surrender all our rights to God. And you follow the Lord willingly, knowing that even if you're single for the rest of your life, that's fine with you. And the Lord will fill that gap. That gap that you feel with the need of accompaniment or a, a wife and if you can't make that abandonment and, and, and surrender in that area you tell him you say lord i really want to follow you in all things but you see i have a strong desire to get married so please take care of it please do whatever necessary and usually this is what happens and this is i've heard this from several people who wanted to surrender and follow god so what god does is he allows for you to enter a relationship for it to go wrong and when you break up, you are so sick of relationships and everything that you say, Lord, I'm giving up now. I'm going to serve you for the rest of my life and then give up my right to be married. I want to be single. And usually when you surrender the right, sometime later in a year or two, the Lord sends you the one. Because he sees you, your heart fully belongs to God and that's what he wants. He doesn't want you wanting anything else more than him. And when you do that, he takes care of everything else. Now, I can't promise you that... He won't keep you single and that he will send you a wife. But we need to reach a point of full abandonment. And when we reach a point of full abandonment, and we, when we do what the Spirit calls us to do, and, when, and we can't pray for it. You can pray and say, Lord, this is my true desire. You don't need to ignore desires that are there, right? Uh, let the Lord do his work with you. But that's the point we need to reach, is where we reach surrender in all areas of our life and let the Lord take care of it and then the Lord he looks at pro there's a verse in the Bible he looks to and from looking for a man whose heart belongs to him and he favors them it says the Lord favors those who fear him and who wait for his loving kindness you literally would be God's favorite he would favor you over others if you fear him and if you wait for his loving kindness that's that that's a promise that we read in Psalms and there's a lot more other promises that if you know, you can you can grasp them and you can say, Lord, this is your promise. You stand by your word. You know, I, I wait on your loving kindness and I fear you, Lord. Send me your blessings. Send me, send me that fulfillment and the uh, abundant life that you promised. And you won't need a, a company or a, a companion during that time. And the time will come, usually, when you trust the Lord. When he will grant you the desire of your heart, he's going to send along a girl and say, this is the one. He will speak to you in your spirit. He say, this is the one. And he will lead you and you get married and you'll be blessed. And the Lord will provide as long as you stay surrendered to him at all times. That's my recommendation. Regarding, uh, you brought up your friends who are going out with unbelievers, right? I'm answering Jeremy's email. Um, and you said that they have a pretty happy life. How does that work out? Why is it so unfair? Or how is it that they have happy lives? But the thing is, you don't know. They don't. They have miserable lives because they have quarrels. They're living for nothing. They don't have... 
it's difficult to explain if you've never experienced it. If you've experienced this, I don't even need to explain it to you. If you haven't experienced this, it's very difficult to explain. I'm a married man. It's very easy from the outside to say you have the happiest family ever. But you don't know the inner workings of the family. You don't have the inner conflict that we have within the family that when we get out, we smile and post pictures, smiling on our honeymoon, posting videos, and everybody's like, they are such a happy family. You have no idea the problems uh, that are within their relationship that they don't tell anybody. Why? Because they got a reputation. They got it, you know. And if they are truly happy, it's only until a certain time when that passion fades and problems start happening. Problem, they either learn to just tolerate each other or something. But when you are with a godly girl who loves Jesus and you have the same, the same direction in life and God sent her to you, what's going to happen after he uses both of you to teach each other lessons? Because he might send you a girl that is, you know, so so opposite of you in character in order to teach you surrender, in order to teach you self-denial, in order to teach you humbleness, in order to teach you a lot of stuff, and it's going to be a hard process, but he will do it on purpose so that when both of you are transformed into the image of Jesus Christ, you will snap together and you're going to, you're going to have a genuinely happy marriage. You won't have to tolerate each other because you love everything about each other. It's going to take a process, it's going to take time, but because you are God's children, because you're walking down his path, you both have the spirit within you that teaches you things. When the Lord calls you to ministry, he can open up to both of you and can both go, right? You can trust your wife to give you godly counsel and, and help when something's happening. You could just be like, hey, what do you think about this? And she'll give you very wise advice. And, um, and you'll learn to love each other despite everything. And it's not going to be a relationship of tolerating certain things that you don't like about the other person. It's going to be a genuinely abundant, happy, and fulfilling experience. And if you would like to know what kind of wife to look for, uh, if you do search, right, or when the right one comes along to, to do like a little test if she is godly and if she is the one that the Lord wants you to marry, read Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31 is a perfect explanation of the type of wife or woman, a godly woman, that the Lord wants us to be with. So I hope this answers your question. So basically, do the work of the Lord. Surrender this into His hands. And whatever the outcome, trust Him. Because it is so much more pleasurable being with Him than picking your own wife instead of letting Him pick it for you. Because He can see the entire planet. He can see every person. He knows the exact girl that would fit the best for you. And only when you are surrendered to the Lord, only when you are seeking His will, he will send her along. So you just need to surrender that and just say, Lord, you know, I'm going to serve you whatever you want to serve. I'm going to close my eyes to this and I'm going to let you find me a companion. The same way that he closed Adam's eyes and made him a companion. Because it says Adam looked all over the earth and couldn't find one. And so if you look all over the earth and you can't find one, close your eyes, go to sleep, right? Symbolically speaking. Let the Lord make one for you uh, and prepare her. And when you come together, It'll be wonderful. <laughs> Let's follow with you. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.